Let's start. Five people. Good. <laughs> Including one of my colleagues. Okay. So, uh, first, uh, before I start, let me make a, a very small statement. Uh, in China and also, you know, in the BSN ecosystem, uh, uh, it's kind of well known I'm very, very against cryptocurrency. So hopefully for, for you guys, no one is uh, from cryptocurrency industry. So it's, uh, you know, because I saw the Hype Ledger conference is like home, <laughs> a little bit away from cryptocurrency. So, uh, so during today's presentation, it's a little bit, you know, sometimes I can say some negative things about the, uh, about the cryptocurrency and the NFTs. So, okay, let's get started. So uh, first, I want to make a, a you know basically explanation in definitions. Uh, many you know people from crypto industry they intend to mess up the definitions. You know, mess up with confuse people between cryptocurrency and the blockchain technology, and uh, you know mess up the definition between NFT, which actually is a. Uh, digital collateralables you can sell and trade on OpenSea, and NFT technologies, or you can call that tokenization. So, so those, those things are totally different. Okay, cryptocurrency is basically a small application built based on blockchain technology. And the digital uh, collateralables basically is built on the technology of tokenization or NFTs. So basically, uh, because why I talk, uh, you know, first uh, talk about the definitions because we talk about the, you know, the laws and the regulations. Usually, usually law, laws and the regulations they govern the applications. You know, when you know, know how to make a bomb, you don't get arrested. Okay, you can draw on the, you know, draw all the diagram, everything. It's fine, but when you begin to make a bomb, it's regulated. Okay, you can get arrested. So we need to differentiate between technology and applications. Okay, if we don't differentiate those, people will say, okay, China banned the cryptocurrency. Why it doesn't ban blockchain technology and NFT technology? Because one is a pure technology, another one is the application, which is against the law. This is uh, FT. Here, FT is a digital collateral market. Uh, it's very small compared to the whole world. Okay, it's less than, I think, less than 2%. Okay, and uh, I totally don't agree with the charts. Here, 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 I think they will like this. <laughs> In three years, probably reach zero. Okay, I, I totally don't agree with this one this one. So why? Because uh, NFT digital collateralables consider something just like cryptocurrency. And uh, we all know cryptocurrency is banned in China. So I will, you know, that, uh, give you guys some, uh, you know, explanation why. So the blockchain legal landscape in China. Okay, I, I will uh, talk about a little bit longer here. So first, uh, everybody knows the cryptocurrency is banned. And this ban is forever. Okay, don't think about, you know, after five years, it will be unbanned. From what I can see, as long as the China is governed by the same government, it will stay the same way for the next 100 years. Okay? And the second one, actually, not many people understand this, is the public chain cannot be legally operated in China due to internet regulations. There's a bunch of laws, you know, how internet should operate in China. For any IT system connect to the internet require KYCs and the content controls, which means any content, if, you know, it breaks the law, it, sh it, can, it can be deleted or banned from the system. So, those things basically against the nature of public chain. So public chain cannot legally operate in China. So people usually say, okay, there's no cryptocurrency. Can we 
run the public chain nodes in China? You can't, okay, you can't legally. And uh, some people say, okay, I can run a public chain permission chain, and I will issue something, you know, cryptocurrency, but I rename that as membership points. <coughs> say, then I can use membership points to, you know, buy and sell stuff, you know, trading to each other, you know, how smart I am. <laughs> and the PBO say, you know, People's Bank of China, basically 15 years ago, they have a regulation of how to regulate membership points. There's uh, two right lines, which means if you cross, you break the law, you can get arrested. Okay, two. First, the membership points cannot trade to each other. For example, if you have China Mobile uh, membership points, right? China Mobile has like uh, 20 billion each year. RMB membership points, worth of membership of points. And then you cannot give to each other. Okay, the system doesn't even support that. And the second right line, you cannot change the membership point back to cash. Okay, if you do that, you run a illegal operation. So if you are a customer of China Mobile somehow, and you get the membership points, what you can do, you go to China Mobile, give the website, and change to you know, phones, and, the, and the even pay, pay your bill. You actually can use a membership point to pay your bill from the same vendor. It's fun. So, which means you cannot run a cryptocurrency operation, just rename that into membership points. This is very, very important. And, but, so far, by all the regulations, holding for individual, holding cryptocurrency, it's, it's legal, okay? So, so basically, and trading between two individuals so far, it's also legal, okay? Which means don't go to a platform or exchange, you call your friends, say, give me cash, I right? You know, transfer some Bitcoin to you. It's totally fine, okay? It doesn't break the law, and the police knows that, you know, they probably join you and uh, you know, <laughs> do some trading individuals. But, okay, there's big catch. Since last uh, September, cryptocurrency no longer is a property protected by law. Okay, this is big. Before that, if, you, if someone rob you of your Bitcoin, you go to police, police can, you know, register the case and move on. But right now, for example, I, you know, meet the team. I say, okay, I have one Bitcoin, you give me cash. You, you, no, uh, he has one Bitcoin. I say, okay, I pay you cash, you know, 10% over the market. Transfer the Bitcoin to me first. I will give you cash, you know, face to face. After the transfer, I run away. Then team goes to the police station, say, I just got robbed. They, they ask, uh, of what? Bitcoin. They say, okay, there's nothing we can do. We consider that not even legal property. You just got robbed of air. Okay, basically, so, so right now, after September last year, uh, all the digital currency disputes and the crimes don't get, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically, the local courts won't take any dispute case on cryptocurrency, and the police won't act on any crime involve cryptocurrency. Of course, if you kill someone and rob them, they will do that. <laughs> they will solve the murder case. <laughs> okay. So th this is actually very, very important because you know even holding and 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 uh, you know selling between individuals is illegal but it's no longer protected by the law, okay? Then it become a risk, you know? And, and actually two weeks ago, there's a case. It's, uh, it's like uh, someone used digital currency to buy the USDT, basically do a trading, right? And, and uh, the, they all get in a room. The guy who actually stole everything, they set up a bunch of cameras. So basically it's, uh, you know, shoot on your phone to get your private keys. 
<laughs> and, and after the treaty, <laughs> this guy go home and found everything's gone. Then he, he went to the police station and uh, you know, basically that guy sent him a message, so what? I just robbed you, so what? <laughs> Real case, two weeks ago, okay. So then that next question is uh, how about NFTs? Actually, this is a little bit tricky, but uh, also it really, really shows how you know, the regulators in China think about the blockchain technology and the NFT technology. Right now, minting and the selling first-hand NFT are totally legal. Okay, there's like 2,000 plus platforms, marketplaces are doing that. And, uh, and even some big state-owned entities and the big corporations are doing that. Ali, Tencent, all doing that. Tencent just shut it down. Okay, Tencent just shut down, but all the major companies are doing NFTs. But not encouraged by authorities, okay, the regulators. Because what? Because, you know, they, they, they don't really want to shut down the NFT market because they think it's as a technology, it will be very powerful for metaverse industry. Okay, they consider in the virtual world in 10 years, every single thing could be built actually based on NFT technology. So that's why they don't want to shut it down. They actually just want to shut down the digital collateral <laughs> markets, but it's really hard to differentiate those two right now. But, but uh, what they can do, they actually talk to all those payment service companies, you know, like Tencent, Pay, Alipay, Union Pay, you know, because if you set a marketplace online, you need the payment services in order to do all the selling, collecting money. They actually tell those guys, if there's an NFT related uh, website, don't give them access. So th that's basically how they control it. But there's always smaller players, you can still, you know, do the business. But so far, the second hand trading, no platform dare to do it. Second, secondary trading basically is, you know, after you buy, then you can sell it. So, but uh, by law, by regulation, it's legal now. Okay, because there are nothing said you cannot do it. Okay, because in China, if it's not prohibited by law, you're supposed to do it legally. Okay, that's, uh, that's the nature of the law. But uh, nobody dare to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a, they just scared, you know, could be, you know. So, so uh, but, uh, but uh, uh, why it's, it's not legally prohibited, but uh, practically banned, which means if, uh, you know, some platform, because many of our customers are actually doing the platforms, some of them initialized uh, some secondhand trading testing, and the authority basically called them to have a chat. <laughs> And after chatting, they shut it down. <laughs> so, so basically, you know, you, you cannot do that. So why? Okay, uh, I just want to spend a little bit more time to explain why the Chinese government authorities don't, don't care about and, and don't allow cryptocurrency and NFT tradings, okay? Because they consider them a, f a form of securities. Just like the U.S., right? U.S. they have very, you know, definition. If the cryptocurrency ICO, they do some kind of activity, you know, the money come in, do something, you know, it will be labeled as securities and governed by the Security Act. So same thing in China, they actually consider it a security. And in China, remember, for stock market, it's it's the largest uh, financial market, you know, most open, you know. There's no T plus zero trading in China. You know, since start, the stock market started 30 years ago. Until today, there's no same day trading, which means if you buy a stock shares, the share and the money will be locked up. You can only do, that's deduce the f frequencies of trading. Okay, so, so why? Remember a funda fundamental fact in China, 70% investors are individuals. And, uh, and among them, the college educated individual investors, probably only like 15%, which means nobody really understands this kind of thing. So it's very easy to be multi 
manipulated, you know, and, and many, many people lose a lot of money. I mean, everything in China can be speculated on, you know, the real estate. I think half of the real estate in China right now is empty and waiting <laughs> the price to go up. And, and uh, you know, as long as there's an imbalance of supply and the demand, people try to <laughs> speculate. I, I remember it's like seven years or eight years, the garlic, you know, there's a shortage of garlic. <laughs> there's a lot of money going into garlic. You know, just speculate, someone store a lot of garlic and, and try to, you know, do that. So that's why, you remember, let's say garlic. If you want to trade on that, speculate it on that, it actually takes, the recycle takes days. You need shaping, handling, storage, everything. You know, it probably you trade, you know, once a week, you know, or, or once a day, tops. NFTs and the cryptocurrency can be traded 1,000 times a day. <laughs> Very dangerous. From the Chinese government, it's too dangerous. Okay, especially for people who don't really understand this kind of security. So that's why it's banned. I totally agree with that. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm totally support uh, this. But just remember, uh, also, uh, actually, uh, you know, we, we always talk with the, the regulators, or authorities, you know, the, you know uh, and, and try to educate, you know, some of them. They actually consider the NFTs is more dangerous than cryptocurrency because it's uh, for the for for, uh, for the NFTs uh, for the di uh, 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 di uh, 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 digital currency you know for the cryptocurrency you know you can issue 100 million of them it's the same name when you mark it it's under the same name if they they want to buy it's very easy. And if you mint 100 million NFTs, it represents 100 million different things. And when there's like 10,000 companies promoting different, it's practically, you cannot buy it, technically. You know, even you in the market, don't buy it. You have no idea what they are. So it's actually considered even more dangerous in China for NFTs. But they can shut down cryptocurrency because it has very, very clear definition. But why they don't shut down NFTs? They can just issue something out, say NFT is it's gone. Then it's gone. Why? Because they really, really understand how powerful NFT technology will be and the blockchain technology will be in the next 10 years. So that's why Everybody also knows the central government of China really, really supportive of blockchain technology and actually NFT technology. That's why, and right now, because the NFT and the digital collectibles, the name is really messed up. Nobody can differentiate. So that's why they don't shut down it completely. It's also a signal. You know, the government is actually very, very supportive of blockchain te technology and NFTs. So, What's the future of NFT in China? It's actually user cases, real, real life user cases, and the utility of NFT technology in the future. Why well, I think it's, it's actually the digital merchandise, digital accounts, uh, there's a lot of utility. Because in China, you cannot trade this secondhand, and also you cannot use cryptocurrency, that's why the stops and the big corporations in China, they actually think a lot of ways to use NFT technology. So I will give you some example. But first, remember, because you cannot use public chains and the cryptocurrency, so how they even build NFT applications. So that's why we launched BSN DDC network. Under BSN flag, uh, in January, okay, basically seven months ago. The uh, BSN DDC network is, uh, is not a blockchain. It's a, it's a decentralized, we call that decentralized cloud services network. Okay, you set up a data centers, all the data center link together, become one big network. And uh, within each data center, you can actually install over 10 open permission nodes. You can 
you can install as many nodes you want, you know, 10 nodes of a certain chain, or one node of each chain. So, and all those open permission to blockchain, all modified from public chains. Okay, we take out the cryptocurrency and put some control. Make sure all those blockchains are 100% in compliance with Chinese internet regulations. There's KYC, there's content control, there's you know, account control. So that's why you know, the, the DDC network, but we still keep all those chains as transparent as public chain. So each of them has browsers, you can check all the you know, hourly transactions, all the smart contracts, everything just like public chain. So, and because there's no cryptocurrency, so the transaction price is fixed at five cents RMB. It's basically less than one cent US dollar. Okay, the, because each transaction is a different price, a little bit different. Uh, this is uh, basically a uh, benchmark is uh, ERC uh, 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 721 NFT minting. Okay, so it's a uh, five cents fix, basically fix. And also we uh, offer some services like uh, we call that BSN official DDC. First, let me, I forgot to mention why we call this DDC. DDC means NFT, <laughs> okay. Uh, before we launch, we talk to different uh, People they suggest to change the NFT name, so don't you know confuse people. So we actually so when I mention DDC, it means NFT. So th this network actually is the BSN like blockchain and the NFT like DDC. So it's blockchain plus DDC <laughs> technology network. Okay. So we also offer some services like DID, Interchain, Tree Trust actually from the Singapore government. It's a it's a world worldwide. Uh, documentation, uh, documentation sharing, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of application. So we basically int uh, integrate them into it. So uh, just for roughly seven, seven months since launch, we actually got a lot of tractions in China. So by end of August, we have like uh, 1,300 registered uh, platforms. So it's a uh, and, and uh, like uh, 400, 500 of them already connecting, connected to the network and, and doing business every day. And uh, the daily transaction right now is constantly over 1 million transactions per day, okay? And, and two thirds of the time, it's bypass the Ethereum, okay, every single day. So a lot of transactions. And we have a wallet address because when you execute a transaction, deploy smart contract, everything, you still need a wallet address, right? With your own private keys, we have registered 20 million wallets. So, which means our customer are them. They actually manage their end users' wallets through them. So, if you need to do KYC, it's, it's done right here. We only have the KYC of them. So, and uh, there's uh, a three million official DDC mint. Okay, so uh, because it, it's more expensive, it's like one RMB per DDC transfer stuff. So that's where we make some money. And uh, the user cases, um, right now, sixty percent of them still digital collateralables. Okay, and the forty other user cases. So why I want to give you guys a little bit of explanation on other user cases, <laughs> okay? Not really. So the first one we can officially talk about now, uh, we just send the uh, agreement, is public lot lottery. Because this is actually a major concept we are pushing. Because we consider the blockchain as kind of the public IT system. You know, it's owned not by one entity, it's by you know, a bunch of guys. So we can monitor that together, govern together. So it become kind of a public environment, you know, compared to the private environment, you know, of almost all the IT systems today. So very few people trust the public lottery system in China. You know, uh, when I talk to them, they say, oh damn, right now, 80% of the buyers is 60 year old or above. <laughs> <laughs> because young kids, young people don't don't trust them because every single thing, 
is executed in their backend system. You know, you don't even know how that random number is generated. <laughs> you know, it could be generated compared to, you know, his uncle's taking number, <laughs> so something like that. So nobody trusts that. So we, we actually push for, you know, talk with the, the administrator of the sports, uh, uh, you know, uh, ministry of sports. They, they manage the sports lottery. So they actually convinced and uh, to have a POC with us, China Mobile, and also some other government agencies. We try to actually move the entire lottery system and redesign into a public environment, which means, you know, for, 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 for each lot, uh, lottery ticket is an NFT. So end user actually buy it with their uh, private key. So because right now in the backend system, you buy a ticket, you probably don't own anything in their backend system. <laughs> it's fixed. But this you use your own private key basically buy. And uh, how to select the winner through a smart contract open source, or you can reverse engineering, see how that operates, you know, choose that. And uh, the, how the reward goes, it goes to your digital, you know, your wallets. wallet. So nobody knows who you are, but they say, okay, you bought that, you are the winner, and you got rewarded. So everything moved from the private system into a public IT system and solved the entire trust issue. So, so they're actually very open to this. We just you know, set up the POC you know, uh, work group and then uh, begin work on that. This is actually very complicated. They need to modify the law <laughs> in order to implement this into production. Okay, they need to you know, pass that in, in Congress <laughs> of the law. Okay. And uh, also, uh, I want to give you one more example is the carbon credit. It's also a government-related project. It's a small city in northeast China. You know, it, sixty percent uh, of that uh, of that city, you know, covered by forest. So, so they have uh, they actually have a big issue is how to calculate the carbon credits of their forest, so the, so they can make uh, additional money. So right now they actually use NFTs. And, uh, and to record the growth of each tree. It's, it's a long process. Right now, we, we already see. So, so they actually record, because they actually use NFT as a small database technology. Okay, they, they actually record the, the, the coordinator, you know, where the tree is, what type of tree is, each year, how big the tree grows. And uh, for 10 years, then they, and remember all those NFTs in a public environment. Okay, everybody can verify and, and access. So I actually can, the best data for auditing. Because you can go there to verify the tree and go through the 10 years data. So this is also a benefit of the public IT system. So uh, actually one, one week ago, you know, because we see the success of the DDC network, we actually launched BSN Spartan network one week ago in, in, in Hong Kong. Uh, the, uh, it's basically the uh, 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 equivalent network of the DDC network outside China. This is only for outside China. Chinese IP address couldn't even set up the data centers, okay? So it made up all the, made of all the data centers, multiple, multiple data centers. So, and the data center is 100% open source. You can download them, you can check the codes, whatever you do, free to install, and all the information we collect, because this is outside China, there's no KYC requirement. So all the information we collect is the email address. So, so basically you use Gmail, register, and anonymous. Okay, and the blockchain, remember this is, a, we call that decentralized cloud services network. It's not a blockchain. We actually, you know, integrate the first the three, this is a cash, <laughs> non-cryptocurrency public chains, Ethereum, Cosmos, and the Polygon Edge. So uh, why non-cryptocurrency? Because we think the cryptocurrency is killing the public chains. 
and uh, narrow that only serving cryptocurrency industry. No one can name one major uh, traditional IT industry user cases on any public chains. Okay, S some bad should abound there only with 10 transactions, <laughs> just for showing. So there's no major tradition. Our job, the BSN's mission, is bring black blockchain technology to traditional IT systems. Okay, that's our job, actually. So that's why we build the non-cryptocurrency public chains, working with our partners, and, and put it on the Spartan network so everybody can access and use them as a traditional decentralized cloud. Please always think about this. This is not crypto, okay? And because, you know, all my friends from the crypto industry knows I'm against the crypto, they think it's a personal project. <laughs> it's, it's not, okay? Because when they ask me who use this kind of non-crypto uh, public chain, I always ask, ask them a question. I say, okay, if you answer my question, your answer is the question, you know, the answer to your question is why don't 99.99% .99 of all IT systems in the world ever use cryptocurrency based public chains? Because the cryptocurrency is on layer one. You know, whatever you do on public chain, you have to hold that speculative assets. You know, very, very fragile price. There's no way they can even control the the cost. You know, some of my friends, they run, you know, pretty large operations. And I, I always joke with them. You say, for your personal asset, right? You, you put on chain in your wallet, you know, Bitcoin, stuff like that. But hey, your company, you know, all the IT system, your website serving your, your customers, everything is on AWS. And it's a centralized system. <laughs> Are you valuing your personal asset over your customer? <laughs> why, why you even trust AWS? It's the one company controlled the environment. Why? So it's not really about the decentralization, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, that's our job, non-crypto public chains. And uh, this is basically answer a question, the elephant in the room, because BSN is originated in China, it's a Chinese project, you know, can we trust them? <laughs> so when we build the Spartan network, we want that to be international standard. Not only international, international standard, we actually go beyond international standard. First open source is 100% open source. All the non-crypto public chain are open source. You can download them, you can download the original codes, compare, and the what a change, okay? And uh, total anonymous, okay? And, and when you pay for the gas, you use fair money to pay, and we even enable you use USDC to pay, which is anonymous. Don't use credit card if you don't trust the project. So it's 100% anonymous. And also transparent. They are public chains. And, and uh, just, uh, I just give you an extreme case. When you buy the gas credit, we call that gas credit, okay? You buy the gas credit and, and uh, the gas credit is non-transferable, okay? You cannot transfer, just like a membership, is, 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 you know, points in China, you cannot transfer, you can only pay for the gas. You use fair money, buy the gas credit, then use the gas credit to pay for the gas, and it's not transferable. There's a master account. So when you buy, you know, it, it goes to record all the activity. We actually make that master account open to public. So can you name another commercial project in the world? They open their balance sheet to you, real time. And you can check their daily income. <laughs> okay, so, so this is how transparent we are, okay. And another question, this is actually whoever understand public chain always ask me, okay, how decentralized the uh, Spartan network is because it's so cheap to use. The price, three cents US dollar to mint uh, NFT. Okay, three cents and it will drop. By end of next year, it's less than one cents. 
and and fixed. Okay, fixed. <laughs> so then people say because the gas fee is so cheap, how you prevent the fifty one percent attack? That's why the validator know are controlled. Okay, then people say, oh, it's become permission chain. <laughs> so right now in the beginning, only BSM Foundation members can set up a validator data, data center. So there will be five in one month. By end of this year, 10 members, and next year, 20 members. So this network, by end of next year, is the 20 validator node data center will govern the entire network. But we will open, you know, when some the uh, uh, regular data centers, uh, you know, the daily spending over a certain level because they care about, the, begin, begin to care about the network, so they will have voting powers too. So we will make this as decentralized as possible. But I want to emphasize one thing. It's basically why you need a universal consensus, the true decentralization. You know, AWS is a centralized system and you go there and pay for it. Why? Because cryptocurrency is a big ledger. And all the, you know, wallets within this ledger. And that's why it requires a universal consensus and a true decentralization to govern the ledger together. There are so many IT process and business scenarios that doesn't even require consensus at all. Okay, I always make a joke about the marriage. That's two people, equal rights. It's centralized, no, it's decentralized. And it doesn't need a universal consensus, it doesn't need you to prove I get married. It's two of us. That's enough for this transaction, if you consider marriage as a business transaction, okay? So that's, that means decentralization is more than two, more than one party, including two, is decentralized. It really depends on what kind of business scenario requires what kind of decentralization. That's why you can use AWS without any problem. When we have 20 validator nodes on this, remember this is a traditional decentralized cloud services network. When we have like 20 equal partner on the network to make votes on almost everything, including adjusting the price, you know, setting up new data center, new members, even, you know, it's already the largest decentralized network for traditional IT systems in the world. Okay, you cannot name a second one, <laughs> okay. So BS Foundation in Singapore. So we basically, you know, five members, September, uh, end of this month, uh, uh, end of this year, 10 members, and, and all those members only right day will be from China. And uh, other members will be, you know, recognized by international companies. We are working on that, so we will release the name and, uh, you know, think about the largest companies in the world will become part of the foundation. And we vote on everything, okay, equal partners. Also, uh, when we launched the Spartan Network in Hong Kong, you know, before we launched, because the non-cryptocurrency uh, public chain are so new, we actually, you know, working with some companies, large companies from Hong Kong, we got overwhelming you know, like, of especially from the CIO, CTOs of the traditional large company. You know, they understand our concept immediately. People from crypto uh, industry, they couldn't understand this very well, you know. <laughs> it's, it's real. So we got uh, HSBC, you know, largest uh, retailer, you know, largest uh, uh, land developer, the largest, uh, you know, restaurant chains, all, you know, they all joined the, uh, uh, the launch and the build the user cases before the launch. All those names, they have smart contract on the Spart Spartan network right now, okay? There's another 20 is working on their user cases, uh, including some very large companies. So 
Because of this and also our success of the DDC network, we really, really think the Spartan network will change the landscape of blockchain industry in the world. Okay, slowly. <laughs> this is a Spartan network official site. It's a Spartan.bsm foundation. Anything uh, related to uh, Spartan network will be uh, built under the BSM foundation and you can read the white paper. Okay, it's a pretty detailed. Quick start. Click on it. You can today to install the data center software and all the non-cryptocurrency nodes. You know everything on the GitHub. You can download the source code. You can download the binary code. And if you say, okay, I don't want to install, you know, a software locally. You know, I don't have the resources. You can click the quick testing. So basically, you can use MetaMask to create a wallet. And uh, you know, go to the website, receive some anonymously, receive some free gas credit, and connect to the chain. Just do whatever you want to do: deploy smart contract, call smart contract, do any transaction, meeting, meeting FTs, whatever you do. Okay, so it's uh, out there. So uh, I actually pass the time, so I will use this as the last slide. So what's the goal for BSN? entire project. Short termly is bring the blockchain technology to all the traditional IT industries. That's our goal actually, to bring blockchain technology as a fundamental technology beyond cryptocurrency. Okay. Long termly we really want to enforce the idea and promote the idea of public IT systems. Okay, compared to all the IT systems today we call private IT systems, like, like AWS, like Facebook, like Google, all controlled by one single company. We think uh, you, you know, the, the, the beautiful part of the blockchain technology is actually build a new environment. It's not controlled by one company, but controlled by a group of people with equal rights. Okay, that's actually the beautiful part of the blockchain technology. So it's, uh, you know, so that's basically the public IT system concept, and uh, that's basically one of the, our ideas. It's uh, the internet will become two layers. One layer called basically is today's internet, and there will be another in layer. It's, it's uh, called the public layer. It's for any company to build in the public IT systems. Okay, then in 10 years, any IT developer, they actually can choose where their data goes, some data goes to a private system, some data goes to a, you know, basically is you want to run your operation. Some data goes to your home, some data goes to a public park, right? Be transparent, easier to, for your customer to get, to control, or some data goes. It's not really, that's why we don't use the word Web3. We think it's a tool cryptocurrency controlled and uh, always emphasize the value. Sometimes just data, there's no value, it's just pure data. Okay, just like, uh, you know, I read a letter to my mother. So it's, uh, it's just a letter. You know, that's passing the data, processing data is not about the value at all. It's just one special case. So we think this is the future. Okay, and trust me, in 50 years, the majority of the data is still in the private <laughs> layer. Okay, so it's not like the Web3 replacing the Web2. They are in parallel. Just give you two choices to build your IT systems. So this is uh, actually the benefits of public IT systems. I, I, I don't want to spend too much time. So BSN technology stack. We have enterprise BSN. It's uh, very complicated. It's actually our main focus. So basically, it's an enterprise software you can install into any cloud services, public cloud intranets, and convert a big space into a blockchain friendly space. Then you can install any permission the framework in the world, like Benzu, Fabric, Corium, anything. And uh, you can also manage the nodes of 30 public chains, including non-crypto public chains. Okay, into it. Basically, why, who need the enterprise BSN? If you want to compete with Black Demon, <laughs> compete with uh, all those no operators, use our software. You can easily to build uh, the application. So public BSN, public network, easier. So we have one for China, DDC, and uh, 
outside China be as smart. So that's basically our stack. Thank you. I passed like five minutes, sorry. Quickly, uh, any questions you guys want to ask? Yes. So I understand within China, the deployments are managed by the government. So there's no concern with the low transaction fee that it's not sustainable. But what about the sparking that's outside of China? Who are going to be standing behind that and not be concerned with the profitability? OK. So uh, first, the DDC is not controlled by the government. It's actually managed by the BSN Development Association, just like a foundation. Uh, of course, there's a SOE involved, but it's all commercial company. Uh, and the DDC network actually profitable right now. Okay, because people, just remember, it's like five cents, like one million. You know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't even include the, the services we provide. So actually, the DDC network alone with the manpower, remember, the resources actually contribute by our customers. We don't even build data centers. They actually contribute. So, and we charge them. <laughs> so that's why it's, it's profitable. And uh, all SOEs, because in China, the more you know, uh, SOE involved, they actually secure, the, you know, give back in the, the network. And outside China is the BSN Foundation. Like I said, Reddit will be the only Chinese company involved. Okay, there's uh, other 9 to 19 companies will be recognized by international companies. When we release the name, you guys will know it. Okay, and uh, they basically have equal rights with Reddit. So we manage the BSN Spartan network together. Any other questions? Are there plans for more blockchains to be supported? Yes, yes. We, we actually, we, we want to build the traction first. Uh, be, uh, because we, we basically know, you know, uh, uh, all, all the major public chains out there. We keep, uh, uh, always keep a, a dialogue with them. And uh, 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 when, when they say there's a big demand in the next three years, from the traditional IT industry. I think most of the public chains community will fork a non-cryptocurrency public chains to serving that kind of customers. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? We actually expect by end of next year, there will be like a 10 to 15 at least. Yeah. Uh, but we only allow a non-cryptocurrency version of a specific chain, just one. We don't want you know two exactly the same chain you know competing with each other, and and who can become a new chain will be voted by the uh, BSN Foundation members. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, thank you. Mm.